Anyway, uh, like always, I'll jump in the fly deck so we can see here, yeah, uh, stand 548 in Ethro. Um, and I'll call uh, FS2 crew like always. We'll go for the PF events. Hi, Captain. How are you today? I'm great. And then uh, move on. So, in the uh, FMC today, is still a triple seven, of course. Uh, uh, the uh, dates are correct for the database. Oops, that happened there. And uh, then the uh, reference airport today, Psycho Golf Lima Lima. And uh, gonna have to set this bad boy up here. And the FMC should uh, prompt me to uh, set the initial uh, position. And here is here's the prompt to uh, set the initial position. So I'll take the GPS position and set it there. And then the uh, Adiru should align uh, both the PFD, the uh, artificial horizon, so to speak, and the navigation display as well. And uh, then we we'll move on to the root page. Request the root. So like I've uh, said before, if you don't uh, have the uh, root saved, obviously it's not going to appear like this. So you need to save the roots first for them to appear. And I use the roots, uh, I save the roots with uh, PFPX and then export them on uh, the various uh, folders so for uh, the PMDG uh, FMC roots, but also for the uh, Evlasoft uh, EFB and uh, uh, Active Sky, possibly also for uh, V Pilot. Oh, excellent! The Logi Logitech yoke, cool. Uh, I think it makes a bit of a difference, to be honest. And uh, so the uplink is ready, unloaded. And so we've got uh, Echo Golf Lima Lima to Echo Delta Delta Fox, the call sign of flight number. It's more actually the call sign, the ATC call sign. Uh, today is going to be a, a random call sign actually. Uh, Speedbird 1 Delta Fox. If he wants to take it. Yep. And then move on to the flight plan. So it's. Uh, so yeah, Detling, uh, Lima 6 to uh, Dover, Upper Lima 9 to Conan, Upper Lima 607 to uh, Spremont, and Tango 180 to Noko. So that's what we have in the uh, FMC. Can activate and execute. Then for the Perfinit, I'll uh, reject this one once again. Enter the reserve, which is uh, 6.2. And uh, cruise altitude, I think 310 is going to be uh, enough. It's not that long of a flight. Cost index 120. And uh, I'll try to see today if uh, changing the cruise CG is going to do anything to the... Anyway, uh, that's not that important actually. Uh, thrust limit, uh, we're going to leave it as is at the moment. I'm just going to start mending the uh, takeoff uh, ref page 2 and set the acceleration at uh, 3000 and the thrust reduction 1500. Then for the departure, I'm going to go for zero 09 left and it's going to be the uh, Detling 1 kilo. Yeah. And uh, looking at the root page, root uh, page number one out of three, we got the uh, origin, destination, runway now appearing, and uh, the call sign. So that's good. And then on the next page, there's no uh, discontinuity, so we can execute. Then looking at the FMC, like always, we need to uh, kind of uh, cross check that the routing is correct. 
So I execute that. And the departure today from uh, 09 left. We go to uh, 1.5 London, which is that uh, Bravo point here. Uh, then it's a right turn track 122 to uh, London 4 DME, as we can uh, see. Then we've got that uh, DE 34 Alpha point, uh, DE 29 Charlie 3000 above, and then uh, London 21. So 21, the way it's uh, worked out actually, uh, is the uh, letter T for the alphabet. Uh, so T is uh, the 20th letter of the alphabet. So uh, the uh, DME here is 21 at 5000 or above. So it's not exactly, it should be actually uniform, but maybe uniform has been used for something else. So they use a uh, tango point there. So Tango being the 20th letter of the alphabet for 20 DME. And then uh, London 24. And on London 25 is the Papa Point. Uh, Papa Point. That's 5, 10, 15, 16. So maybe 16 DME from another, actually, uh, VWAR. Yeah, it's 16 DME from uh, Deadlink VOR because there's 5 and 11, so yeah. So that's the way a little bit it works. And then uh, the 283 uh, point is uh, f Echo, 5 miles uh, to Deadlink, yeah, that's correct. And then Deadlink, so all of these uh, waypoints at 6,000 feet. Right, that's the uh, little tricks of uh, the uh, navigation database. Uh, upload the winds, it's all in there, I'll execute and then go to the decent page forecast and uh, load the winds as well I think it's six zero there uh, Navrad, we don't really do anything there progress page 358 miles for the moment is good do a root copy onto route 2 and back to our route 1 uh, check in here, uh, sounding uh, uplinks, and uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. Six thousand feet here. As weather zero five zero at eight fourteen degrees one zero two one. Beautiful. The EFIS panel is uh, set. Flight directors will come on. Uh, runway track is gonna be zero nine something. Zero uh, nine two, yeah. And initially 6,000 feet. Right, Tio. Then uh, come down, check the oxygen. No issues there. The PFD is looking correct. And D is good. And then the center pedestal. The speed brake was uh, up, so that's not good. That's probably because I pressed the button at some point in inadvertently. Pre flight checklist. Oxygen. Tested 100%. Tested 100%. Flight instruments. Heading 271, altimeter 1021. Heading 271, altimeter 1021. Pre flight checklist complete. Hi guys, here's the load chute for you. Have a safe flight. Thank you. All right, that gets things moving along. Start the APU. And so for the, well, supposedly for the load sheet, so for the, uh, for the load of the aircraft, um, back to the fly plan. We look at the uh, uh, numbers uh, down here. So we've got uh, zero fuel rate this time now of at uh, 226.3 so you can either uh, type it and uh, then put it here or if you have already entered it in the uh, FMC as part of the FS actions then you can double click there and it brings it directly into the, the window uh, so 226.3 plus 16 tons that's 242.9 so that's good 
Uh, assume temperature is uh, 74, I think. Let me. Yep, 74. Um, we'll accelerate at 3000, we use the thrust at 1500. Uh, flaps is 5. CG from uh, PMDG is 21%. And the speeds are 157, uh, 159, and uh, 162. So these are the speeds uh, from uh, Boeing, and actually PMDG, uh, like always, is not too far off. At least today is not too far off. Uh, we are 3147, that's correct. So 250 below 100. 310 recommending 310 there was um, a message about enable altitude I'm not really sure uh, what this is about because the restrictions are not uh, uh, that bad on the departure so it should be all right all right the APU is running so we can disconnect the uh, external power ground flatic go ahead please disconnect the ground equipment Roger. Ground flatic. Go ahead. Can we pressurize hydraulics? Roger, you are clear to pressurize the hydraulics. Before start procedure. Are we clear to pressurize? Yes. Okay. So while pressurizing, the right electric pump comes uh, to the auto position first, uh, then these two come on, and then the left and center one, center two demand pumps come on. The fuel panel is set, the beacon comes on. Uh, I can check the recall, uh, display the checklist at some point, but the display I had uh, checked this would be checklist. when prompted. Uh, set the uh, transponder to TARA and that's about it really before start uh, checklist before start checklist flight deck door closed and locked MCP set and checked takeoff speeds set and checked CDU preflight completed completed trim Set and checked. Taxi and takeoff briefing. Completed. Before start checklist complete. So the trim is seven units. Yep. Cool. All right, we're done. I can cancel recall and uh, ask for push. So far, so good. Yeah, the uh, right um, uh, demand pump here needs to come on first and then uh, either the C2 or the C1 but I do believe it's better to uh, switch on the C1 first then the C2 and then the left electric the, the C1 demand and the C2 uh, demand there so there is a sequence indeed so the right electric first I think that's to prevent some sort of uh, fluid transfer if I'm uh, if I'm correct and I think the the C1 first comes on because uh, the C2 um, doesn't work if the C1 is not uh, on so something like that so the C1 needs to come on first and uh, we'll show the nose to the right number one departure check completed bypass pin inserted release parking brakes commencing push all engines clear this Start sounds at will. this sounds like a multi crew experience a little bit the voice of the of the uh, engineer on the ground I uh, didn't do this, I got distracted there, so 162 on the V2, that would help. LNAV and VNAV and the track and the altitude are correct. Yeah, that would help to do that.
Start sequence is two then one. Check. Start the right engine. Starting right. And the fuel control switch side goes to run. Oil pressure. Let's check, check, check. So far, so good. Alright, so once the red line disappears, that means the start is uh, ended. Uh, start the left engine. Starting left. Yeah. So the start uh, switch comes to start. Oil pressure. And then the uh, fuel control uh, to run. Set parking brakes. Waiting your confirmation for good engine start. So yes, yeah, so like always, the the start is kind of uh, automatic. It's not like the 737 when you need to wait for a 25% uh, N2 uh, to kind of uh, bring the fuel in. And uh, fuel control switch here comes to uh, uh, run uh, pretty much straight away, and then uh, everything is done uh, electronically. And the uh, uh, the fuel in particular is in, is uh, injected uh, uh, around 33% uh, N2, but it's all done automatically, so it's, it's quite good. Flaps five. Flaps five. Okay, ground, you can uh, disconnect uh, all equipment. See you on the left with the bin. Right is clear. Yeah, the uh, hydraulic system is actually uh, quite complicated. Um, if I've got the chance, maybe in the cruise quickly, to kind of uh, review a little bit uh, the system. The uh, synoptics actually help quite a bit uh, to kind of uh, show you what. Uh, what part they uh, they control, um, but uh, it's quite a complicated system actually. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's quite uh, complex. Right, so flight controls left, down, left, right, up and down. The radars move. We all good. And the guy is gone, huh? Eh? While I was chatting away. Looks like it. Yeah, it's all clear. Nobody around. Before taxi checklist. Before taxi checklist. Anti ice. Auto. Recall. Checked. Flight controls. Checked. Ground equipment. Clear. Before taxi checklist complete. Clear left. Clear right. All right, I'll put the uh, EFB on again. Uh, let's go to uh, zero nine uh, left. Twenty six percent. This kind of um, breakaway thrust is just about starting to move, but uh, yeah, with difficulty actually. And then uh, you need to keep the the thrust on. So from what I understand, on the seven three seven, the PMDG seven three seven, this kind of little. Uh, 
bug is uh, worked on a little bit, so uh, that's uh, that's quite good. Right, so we'll go on the second left, I guess, on Alpha. Yeah, no, otherwise, hope uh, everybody's having a good Sunday today. So yeah, it's a kind of uh, second leg of this kind of uh, European tour. The flight, obviously, there's no 777 flight between uh, uh, Heathrow and uh, Frankfurt. It's kind of uh, fictional flight, so to speak. Uh, but uh, yeah, leg number two, they uh, try to do uh, more flights around. Uh, so the, the cabin, cabin is ready. Is ready. Uh, can cabin display crew, the take your seats. Weather radar. Before takeoff checklist. <clears throat> before takeoff checklist. Before takeoff checklist complete. Checklist complete. Runway entry procedure. Check. Clear on the approach. Uh, yeah, I should be clear on this. Uh, I'm on my own, I don't have any uh, traffic or any uh, online network, online traffic, so, yeah. Right, so we'll line up uh, zero 09 left. As I said, I managed to uh, improve the frames by uh, uh, disabling uh, ORBX England, which uh, seems to clash with uh, the through uh, UK 2000. So that's approaching uh, zero nine left. That side of things is kind of uh, worked out. On runway zero nine left. All right, let's go. So bring the uh, N1 to uh, 55. Take off. Check. Thrust ref. Check. Thrust set. Eighty knots. Hold. Check. Rotate. Positive climb. Gear up. Gear up. Four hundred feet. Thrust ref. Check. Enough speed. All right. I forgot to remove the uh, EFP during the takeoff. So I was like, you know, with my hands jumping with the mouse to. Uh, Change the view, everything. Climb. Right, so today on this departure, it's another good example of uh, the way that uh, Vinav uh, works. Um, if, uh, for example, uh, the right way is actually to leave the uh, altitude in the MCP as per the uh, FMC uh, restrictions. Uh, it's actually not six zero. Maybe by putting six zero zero one, like the uh, triples, like the seven three seven. 
then yeah, it gives six thousand. That's weird because the triple seven doesn't do that actually. The real seven three seven does, but not the triple uh, seven. Uh, flaps one. Speed check. Flaps one. Well, let's clean up first. Check. Flaps up. Speed check. Flaps up. After takeoff checklist. After takeoff checklist. After takeoff checklist complete. So yeah, so if I increase the uh, altitude in the uh, altitude window here, uh, because we've got those uh, uh, six thousand feet uh, restrictions in the FMC, uh, the aircraft is uh, gonna level off, as you can see now. Uh, speed VNAV path and it's gonna follow the vertical profile uh, uh, set in the uh, FMC so uh, of course the uh, altitude in the MCP window always has to match whatever has been given by ATC but for example if ATC uh, climbs us already like 150 and uh, those restrictions are still in the FMC, then the aircraft is gonna level off at 6,000 feet. So, uh, as soon as you get the clearance to uh, uh, 150, for example, then you'll have to delete the restrictions. So, to delete the restrictions, you can press the uh, altitude intervention button here. So, once the first restriction is cancelled, uh, twice, three times, four times, and a last time. And now it's gonna resume the climb with uh, thrust rev enough uh, speed. Max uh, taxi speed in real um, about 30 knots. We can't really taxi uh, faster than uh, uh, 30 knots because then the uh, the uh, onboard uh, quick access recorder kind of uh, picks up. Uh, the uh, the speed and then you'll have to justify yourself so uh, yeah 30 knots but 30 knots to be honest on a straight line is already quite fast I mean you feel the aircraft kind of you know going along quite quickly so 30 knots is, is enough you can backtrack at around 50 knots so if you have to do a backtrack somewhere some some places don't have like uh, taxiways all the way along the, the runway so You'll have to enter the runway, kind of uh, uh, go back up the runway in the wrong direction, do a 180 at the end, and then line up for takeoff. So when you uh, backtrack, then you can uh, uh, increase the speed to about 50 knots. Makes it go a little bit faster, because if you've got to uh, backtrack at a uh, 3000 meter runway, then it's going to take a little bit of time. So. Flight level 100. Seatbelt sign auto. Seatbelt signs auto. So that's it, really. Climbing uh, straight away to 310. If there was, of course, uh, any uh, ATC or anything like that, uh, out of a departure like this uh, in uh, London because of all those uh, harmed uh, restrictions at 6,000 feet. If they were clearing you above the restrictions, then they would have to say something like either like climb via the seat if they want you to stay uh, 6,000 feet and then climb, let's say, to uh, uh, fly level 150. But if they want you to climb straight away to uh, fly level 150, then they will say uh, climb unrestricted or like they do in the UK, climb now, uh, fly level 150. So if they don't say unrestricted and they say climb via the seat, then you have to uh, respect all the, the uh, uh, speed and uh, uh, level uh, restrictions on the seat so you would have to maintain 6,000 feet after de until deadling and then climb after that so you've got to be careful on uh, exactly the uh, the worms uh, used by the controller kind of uh, southeast of uh, London the Thames there mouth 
Uh, very good weather again today around London. That's uh, uh, pretty much real uh, weather with uh, active skies. So it's not uh, depicting too much uh, in terms of cloud or anything like that. The channel is very clear. So very nice weather today again. Spring has sprung. This is quite a cool uh, livery actually, quite like this one. You can see one uh, white light at the back of the wing there, one green light on the right wing. So green is right. And then if I can quickly jump to the other side, we can kind of make it up here. A red light to the left and still the, the white uh, light at the back of the wing. Obviously the beacon, which I can't see on top. Oh yeah, here it is here. The beacon and there's one normally underneath. And there's like a flashing light at the back of the uh, cone here and there's a fixed light as well. And there should be there should be a beacon underneath. Yeah, here it is. You can see the flash here. Yeah. One thing I didn't mention was the strobe lights as well, which are also on the, the wing tips. We had to uh, leave the aircraft in uh, Manston and uh, take a passenger flight back up. That was uh, interesting. <laughs> Good days. And so it's nice. Just about to start crossing the channel. And almost at uh, cruise level already. So no need to uh, climb uh, much higher than 31 on a short flight like that because otherwise all you're gonna do is uh, climb and uh, descend so. so I'll try to have a quick chat uh, as I said uh, earlier on when you asked the question about the uh, hydraulic system the cruise it's a short cruise so I'm not gonna have too much time but minutes after takeoff we're already at uh, 30,000 feet almost so it's climbing quite well. So 
Traveler last five thousand feet, we can uh, reduce feet the rate of climb with a vertical speed set one thousand feet. If the the V nav is uh, giving a high rate of climb, then uh, we can uh, reduce the the rate of climb with uh, vertical speed. If uh, V nav doesn't give too much of uh, of uh, rate of climb, then using vertical speed is, is not necessary because if VNAV only gives a thousand feet per minute, that means that there's not a lot of uh, spare uh, performance for the climb. But if it's uh, giving uh, two and a half thousand feet per minute as it was giving, then uh, vertical speed 1000 is, uh, is quite appropriate above all when you are at like high levels. Uh, in RVSM, you've got other aircraft uh, crossing. You don't want to uh, to set off the gas, so it's, uh, it's a good thing to do. And uh, then we've got out, so we can go back to uh, VNAV.